October 8, 1976. 9.25 a.m. Friday, frosty morning, 38 degrees, now fair. Dear Joy, Bo, and boys, We arrived home Wednesday about 5 p.m. We drove by way of Hastings and dropped Irene off at her home. She did well on her trip, but trying to walk around Philadelphia was hard on her, with her foot so cropped off. It made a strain on her back, and after she walked a little ways, she had to stop and get the pain out. Uncle Si's legs, especially the side where he has gout, made walking difficult for him, too, but he did well. It did make his legs hurt badly, so he had to rub them when he could and before bedtime. It's good our Holiday Inn was in the heart of the area where many famous historical buildings, etc., were. Independence Hall and Congressional Hall were so interesting and well-preserved. The ancient cemetery, where many of the famous men of the signing of the Declaration of Independence are buried there. The stones are so worn away that many names and dates have vanished. Benjamin Franklin's grave is by the front gate. We didn't stay in town long enough to see nearly all the places we'd like to have seen. The U.S. Mint was so interesting, and we watched the process of making pennies from the bar about 12 feet long and 16 inches wide until it stretched to a long, thin sheet and was put through all the processes to make the finished coins. We could look down and watch from the balcony and see those huge machines do their special bit, and then the metal moved on and into completion. They didn't hand out samples. Oh, yes, we noticed that the big presses in the mint that stamped out pennies, etc., were Bliss Company presses. I hope the movies, etc., we took at the Liberty Bell Pavilion turn out well. I think the movies of Christchurch should be nice as it was sunset, and the tall white spire and tower were so lovely. We headed back for Cleveland on Tuesday a.m., and in a little while it began to rain, and rained very hard much of the way on to Julia's. But it was okay when we got there. Aunt Julia teaches or tutors every day now at a school nearby junior high. Kids who have normal intelligence but need special help. She still raises worms for science students and saw one fat green worm make his cocoon in the corner of his box. We saw Emily, Jim, and Kenny on Tuesday evening a little while. Jim looked so thin and tired. He was preparing a lecture to give medical students the next morning. We always enjoy him and his wit. Emily looks really well and young yet. She's a busy mother as she's in so many activities like being president of PTA and swim clubs and plays tennis. Aunt Julia fed us real well, and we always enjoy her lovely home and flowers and the good sleep in fine beds. We surely wish she'd managed to come up to see us sometime, but it's far for her to come alone. Dad was so rushed yesterday trying to get his jobs done so he'd be ready to leave at 8 a.m. today. Jerry had to go to Plainwell for a part for his car, so he went to the bank and grocery and got gas for Dad, so that that helped a lot, and Dad didn't even have to go to town. Gerald Anders got the groceries for their trip to Idaho, and he was here at 8 o'clock this a.m., all ready to go. The weather is very nice today, and the weather map looks like they'd have good weather all the way out west. They left at 8.10 a.m. I did the laundry yesterday and had bad luck with perma-pressed clothes. I had the dial set quite low, but for some reason it was hot when I opened it up, and now I have a lot of pressing to do today. Tom phoned home to Jerry's on Thursday, and again last night, telling them that the doctor says that Blanca is pregnant. They made several tests, etc. Now Tom and Blanca want to pull up roots and head for Mexico, as Blanca wants to be near her mother. Jerry is trying to persuade Tom to remain in school until the end of his term, so as not to lose his credit. Anyhow, the VW van isn't in good enough shape to make that long trip— we feel sorry for Jerry and Dorlene trying to help Tom and Blanca, but if the kids won't listen, it's bad. I think Tom and Blanca may come home today. Tom has been home several times, hitchhiked, etc., for a few hours, and then goes back to Owasso. If they do get to Torreon, Tom hopes he can teach English, but he only would get two dollars per hour, and that's not enough for a family to live on. Philip is still going strong in football, and the game last Friday night against Springfield was won by 20-6 to by Delton. Phil made three touchdowns. 
I hope all the glowing accounts in the newspapers don't give Phil the big head. One statement was that Phil was the finest running back in the Kalamazoo Valley Association, or KVA, in 10 years, etc. Saturday is homecoming at Delton Kellogg High School, and at halftime, the king and queen will be announced and honored. Jody was here last night. She thinks Phil will be king, but we shall have to wait and see. Spoiler alert, Phil was indeed crowned king, and Chris Marcuse was the queen. While the royal portrait is yet to be painted, you can find photos of the majestic pair. Uncle Silas and I will be going, so I hope the evening isn't too chilly. Uncle Si feels the cold, of course. Dad wishes he could be there, too, but he couldn't wait long enough to see the game. I hope Jerry can get movies of the whole game, but he won't get there for the homecoming parade, etc., as he has to work. Aunt Mabel, John Cock, and Walter have left for Florida. I hope they make the trip okay. The autumn colors are getting very lovely in many places in Michigan, and we enjoyed that as we drove towards home after the rain let up. The duck season opened a couple of days ago, but I haven't heard any shooting today. I wonder about the geese here at Gun Lake. I must write to Howie. It was so nice to hear from him. Thanks for the letter, Howie. We haven't gotten any letter from Jim just lately. He may be somewhere near England now, or in the North Sea. We should be hearing from Jim and you folks again soon. I hope Jack has found work in Houston by now. I don't see how he can travel to Mexico and live there without a job. Our love and prayers are with him. We hope the weather cooled off there so Bo's many jobs won't be so tiring. We surely hope Wendell doesn't injure his ankle again. Football is a great game, but not as important as a boy's health. How is David these nice fall days? Take good care of the other fellows in football, David, and study well. Say hello to the Starns for me. God bless them. We love you all. Keep well and smiling. Love and prayers. Mom and Dad and Uncle Silas. P.S. Uncle Silas will be here until Monday, then on to visit others.